so what you're looking at is video number one for the poetry unit that we're going to do. Um, we're going to do this quickly since I only have a week left with you. But step one, we want to talk about briefly who are these romantic guys and what do they believe in? Um, the quick and dirty version is they were hippies. That's it. Um, we think of hippies as the 60s and 70s, but these people actually were the first hippies in the late 1700s, and it would later carry into America in the early 1800s. But these are the guys who started it all. So as we go through this, I want you to think peace, love, fight the man, be an individual, think outside the box, go out and enjoy nature, hug a tree, that whole thing. Okay, that's where we are right now. So we're going to start with the lamb, then go to the tiger. Now, these two guys go together. They're called sister poems because they actually talk about the same basic principle. So what I want you guys to do, you obviously don't have a copy of the poem. So I simply want you to read it with me. I'm going to go through like I would in class with the document camera. I'm going to go through and make comments here. And I want you to read it and then see what I write. Okay. Um, this is William Blake. William Blake was famous for having done a book that he broke into two parts. The first part is Songs of Innocence. The second one is called Songs of Experience. Now, what he means here is... Um, innocence is, uh, people who are young, um, they haven't, the world hasn't broken them yet. Songs of experience. And the one we're going to do is called the tiger is people who are, um, they've been around the block a few times. They know that the world's not fair. Um, there's always a few moments in our lives where the world kind of breaks us in two. Okay, the world kind of says, ah, ha, ha, it's not fair. I never said it was fair. And we have to live through those experiences and they make us stronger. Okay, that's what he's talking about with songs of experience. So we're going to go back here. We're going to start with the lamb. I'm going to read it. I want you to think about as I go through this, okay, notice words that are sweet, soft, cuddly, warm, and fuzzy. Okay, you ready? Little lamb, notice lamb is capitalized. Little lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? Gave thee life and bid thee feed by the stream and o'er the... It says o'er the mead, but I changed it just so we have an easier understanding. Over the meadow. Gave thee clothing of delight, softest clothing, woolly, bright. Gave thee such a tender voice, making all the vales rejoice. Valleys. Little lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? Okay, so we have... A little fuzzy lamb, okay? Little cutesy lambs. And again, I said to notice that it is capitalized. Okay. In a moment, that's going to become bleeding obvious. But for right now, just think, lamb is capitalized. All right. So looking at words that are sweet, fuzzy, cuddly, we have delight, woolly, bright, softest clothing, tender voice, uh, making the valleys rejoice. These are happy moments, okay? These are beautiful, wonderful things. Okay, next stanza. Little lamb, I'll tell thee. Little lamb, I'll tell thee. So we're still with the capitalized lamb. He is called by thy name, for he calls himself a lamb. Okay, now at what point do we always capitalize the word he? There is one time when we capitalize he and every word that refers to that person, and that's God, Jesus, okay? So we know for a fact now that this lamb that they're referring to is Jesus. He calls himself a lamb, okay? If you're uh, familiar with the Bible, that he's referred to as the lamb of God, okay? He is meek and he is mild. He became a little child. I a child and thou a lamb. We are called by his name, little lamb, God bless thee, little lamb, God bless thee. Okay, so we know that this lamb is Jesus or is a metaphor for Jesus. Okay, so next thing we discussed, A, we have fuzzy, woolly, happy, wonderful, soft and cuddly words. We have discussion about Jesus. Now, there's one more thing I want to tell you, show you, and then we'll move on to the sister poem in the next video, the tiger. 
Right here, we're going to discuss quickly rhyme scheme. Okay, rhyme scheme is where we discuss and talk about the last word in each stanza, or excuse me, in each line, sorry. V is the first rhyme, and it gets the first letter of the alphabet, so it's A. Now, everything after this also gets an A. So V again, A. Do you see V anywhere else? Oh, there it is down there. So we're going to put an A there. Okay, so now feed does not rhyme with V. So it gets the next letter of the alphabet, which is B. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is supposed to say mead, M-E-A-D. I changed it. So we're going to go back to mead just for the sake of rhyming here. Feed, mead, that's a B. Now, oops, I missed one right there. See that? That V, I missed that. Okay. Delight. Delight is not a rhyme with V or mead, so it gets the next letter in the alphabet, which is C. Bright rhymes with delight, gets a C. Voice and rejoice also rhyme. So these guys get the next letter, D and D. So you have A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and back to A, A. This is known as a couplet, okay? You have two, 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 and two again. These are called rhyming couplets. So if you were to, well, you can't see that. If you were to see this on a test question, and I said, okay, now tell me the rhyme scheme for this one, you would choose the one that said AA, BB, CC, DD, AA, because you have sets of two rhyming. And if you'll notice, look at the next stanza, VV, name lamb. It's not exactly the best rhyme. When this happens, I often think about what it might have sounded like with a British accent because the writers were British. So name lamb. It still doesn't sound great, but that's as close as we're going to get there. Mild child, lamb name again, and then the, the. So we're still in rhyming couplets. Now, granted, that's not the best rhyme, but you know what? Blake was one of the greatest, so we'll just like give him a pass, huh? Okay, cool. So next, we're going to go to the tiger, but I'm going to stop this video so they're not really long. Okay. Now, this is where I start looking like some sort of old fart who can't figure out how to stop a video. Go away and stop.